Bombbuster 72 here. <clears throat> so I haven't shown you guys. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I built a little workbench here. It's uh, not the greatest. I, I wouldn't consider myself to be a carpenter by any means, but it's uh, pretty sturdy. Um, it folds up kind of up against the wall here so I can pull my car in the garage still. But I also, I, I bought a couple of things. No more standing on plywood blocks and stuff like that for molding Kydex. I've got a little, just a small Kydex press. And I also got an Arbor press for uh, doing eyelets. And I thought I would show you guys this and I would show you by, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a holster today. And what I got here, I've already taped it all up, but this is my on the cheap competition pistol. It was a Springfield XD, XD9. Um, not the M version and with all the you know upgrade everything to it no trigger job yet but you know we're talking less than seven hundred dollars really for everything including the gun itself so not bad but we're gonna make is a holster for it and we're gonna go with this um, olive drab kydex and we're gonna do something I haven't ever done before, so I had to do a little bit of research and try to figure out how I was going to do this. We're gonna make a taco holster, which means that we're gonna take it and we're gonna wrap it around. It's not gonna be, you know, eyelets on both sides. It's gonna be wrapped around, and we're gonna actually try to make it so that it, um, we're gonna put some screws in it, but it's gonna have uh, some tension screws so we can tighten it up. So hopefully this works out. If not, this video will never see the light of day. So we're going to figure out how we're going to do this. Um, like I said, I taped everything off. What I've got here, I've got a... Uh, you can use a dowel up here or a you know little block of wood. Honestly, I used a pencil. I used a pencil, a brand new pencil, so that it doesn't have a point on it. And it's right up here to give us a channel for our uh, front sight so that it has something to slide through. And we're not going to take it all the way up here anyway, but you know the, uh, the pencil was long enough, so that's what we're going to do. Then we put tape on it, and just knowing from other knives and things like that that I've done, you want to put plenty of layers of tape, okay? You can, uh, the biggest mistake that I made early on when making Kydex um, items was having not enough clearance. Things were a little bit too tight in there, a little bit too much retention. So what I did is we've got layers and layers. There's at least three layers on each side. Um, this side up here has a few more because we blocked off uh, the, the takedown lever as well as the um, slide release so that they'll have a channel to go in. We also put this block here so that we can uh, have something to put some mounting screws to and they aren't going to touch the, uh, the pistol itself. We also blocked off the ejection port a little bit. We don't want too much retention there. That is one spot where you can get way too much retention. And if you do, it, it's going to be really tough to get it out of there. You, there is ways you can relieve some of that pressure, but you don't want to do it. It's better just to, to do it right the first time. I also, we filled in the trigger housing a little bit. We still have a little bit so that we can get a little bit of retention there, but not too much. I have some leather that I use for my knife tests, and I just cut out some pieces and I put them in there. And that also gives it a little bit of give so that we can get a little bit of retention, but not too much. And I also cut some little strips of wood and I filled in my, uh, my rails a little bit because we don't want those to grab a hold and not allow us to uh, pull the pistol out of the holster. So we've got everything taped up already. I didn't show you guys that. It's honestly, it's tedious work. It's long. It's uh, really, there's nothing fun about it, okay? But it has to be done. So I did all that already. And then something that um, I decided I'm going to try, I got this, uh, this two inch thick piece of foam and I split it. And my idea that I'm going to do is when I get the Kydex heated up, I'm going to lay this out like this, kind of butterflied open, lay the Kydex in it, and then I'm going to just push this down in, allow it to fold up around, and then I'm just going to put this whole thing in the press here. So that's, that's my plan. I'm probably going to have to put some, some cotton or something, some material in here so that the Kydex doesn't stick to this because this is not necessarily high temp foam. It can't handle the temperature. So what we're going to do, we're going to put some cloth in there so that we don't have to worry about that. So to let us have some tensioning screws, we need some space in there. So I've got this block of wood. This is for another project I'm going to do. We're going to cut this out right here, somewhere in here. 
and we're going to cut this piece out and that will fit right in here okay so we're going to just have an inch or so of extra material we're going to have this quarter inch thick piece of wood this plywood in there that way when the kydex forms around it it will actually have that space built into it then we can just put the uh, screws into that we can tighten it up or loosen it out as we need to so that's what we need to do next that's looking pretty good doesn't have to be perfect we need to have you know most of it the space taken out of there and what we're gonna do we're not even gonna tape it to it because I want it to kind of float in there so we we might not tape it evenly but that foam will definitely press evenly so we're just gonna put it on top let me show you how it's gonna look here when we put this in here we're gonna have the kydex in okay actually gonna have it probably about like that we're gonna sandwich this in there with it and this piece is going to fit right here. We're just going to kind of make sure we line everything up as close as we can. When this all folds over, it's going to put that space between the two pieces of kydex right here. Allow it a kind of a clamshell effect. Hopefully this works out. We've got this extra piece here and that's actually pretty handy for us because on the back side, on the side that's against our skin, we want it to come up a little bit of a sweat shield up here. We're going to use it for that, and that should be plenty. Now, for those of you who um, have hobbies they don't want to admit, and for those of you who have wives who have hobbies, this is a sewing uh, measurer, I guess, a sewing ruler or something to that effect. I like it because you can see through it. It is really handy for that. Uh, I think this was $10 to $12 at Walmart. It works really well for this. It's a good straight edge for cutting. And um, yeah, it works really well. So thinking a little bit outside of the norm, getting using things that uh, are used for sewing and, and quilting for Tidex, it's actually working out for me. get that very straight it's okay all right so we need to get this in get this heated up and uh, get everything ready and prep so I'm gonna go get it heated and when I come back we're gonna actually be pressing this thing work fast while it's still nice and pliable. And that's not it's not horrible. We didn't get as much over here as uh, what I thought we would we were going to get, but it's okay because we're actually this we're not gonna get any retention here anyway. We're gonna get all of our retention right down here. So uh, it doesn't look too bad. Doesn't look bad at all. You can see we got. This doesn't look bad at all. Obviously, right now we've got some really good retention because it wrapped up around the back. So we need to kind of clean that up. What we're going to do, we're going to take this, we're going to try to get it as low as possible. Um, because we want it to be kind of a competition type. So we're going to take it as low as possible and then come up and got to cover that trigger. Got to cover the trigger guard completely because, you know, safety. We want to make sure that we're keeping things out of that trigger guard. So we're going to uh, mark this all out and we're going to cut it out 
and we'll see what we got from there. All right, so we're just gonna try to mark this out. Now, along the trigger guard, I'm really just barely wrapping it around. We're just gonna pretty much follow the contour, follow that line down. Now, this part, what we're gonna do, we're really just gonna angle it, just kind of follow the contours of the uh, trigger guard, and then across. We really don't want too much grabbing a hold of this pistol. We want it to be as safe as possible. We want it to be fast too. So we're gonna, do, gonna pick a spot, I guess. We're gonna go. We don't want to go too low. We want to still have some retention here. So we're gonna make sure that this is fits above where our retention screws are gonna be. So we're gonna we go right about here, but we're gonna just angle it a little bit, maybe to give it some, make it interesting, you know what I mean. All right, again, we're just gonna use these. We could use a, like the jigsaw or something, but because their two halves are not symmetrical, wouldn't really work out very well for us. When you're doing the uh, a clamshell type, a sandwich type of holster, it's really easy to do it because you can do one half at a time. But because this is all one wrap, we're gonna have to cut this kind of the old-fashioned way. We want to leave plenty of material on the outside of it. Otherwise, it's going to be hard to clean it up. So we're going to leave plenty of material and we'll sand that stuff off and clean that off later. All right, so there's our basic shape that we've got. And I think we should be pretty good. That doesn't look too bad. I know it doesn't look like much right now, but that will eventually turn into a, a decent looking holster. Okay, we've got uh, all this pretty much ground down to where we want it. And like I said, we're going to have two tensioning screws right here with some rubber grommets. We don't want too much retention, but we need enough that we can move and run with this thing and not have to worry about it coming out of there. So we're going to put some tensioning screws in there. So now what we need to do, we need to figure out how we're going to uh, put our screws in there, mark those out, figure out where we're going to put them. I'm going to mark them out on here and uh, we're going to get them drilled. Now this is a good idea to measure these just because you want symmetry. Do you know what? I've had this idea. I've had this thought. I don't want my holster to be like everybody else's. I want it to be different. So I'm thinking I might do this. I might wrap another piece around here. I don't think it's a very good color for that. I'm thinking, let's see, that one. What do you think? It looks like a good color, doesn't it? Yeah. So I think I'm going to wrap my wrap. Does that make sense? I'm going to wrap it. I'm just going to have a little two-tone. We're just going to put a stripe kind of thing around there. So let's see. Let's figure out how to do this. So when I come back, I'll have this uh, piece cut out. And we're going to heat this up. And we're going to wrap another thing around here. I know. We're crazy here. It's a lot of work for just a little bit of color. We're going to clean it up so that we have a good border around the bottom. And then we're going to clean this up too. And I think we're going to rivet it to these pieces, front and back. And then we'll still put a screw. So we're going to use four rivets. Rivet there, rivet there, one there, one there. And then a screw to still give us tension in the middle. All right, guys. So I apologize, but I went through 
two batteries for my camera during that video and it died right at the end and I wasn't able to show you uh, the finished product and what we did to finish it off so I wanted to show you guys that now so anyway guys what we what we did to finish this off I uh, I put some holes in it for the screws for the mounting screws and we mounted a tech lock to it I really like tech lock belt loops there because they're just they're very professional they lock into place you can adjust them for your belt this one adjusts I have got it adjusted up so it's really nice and snug on uh, my gun belt so we've got that mounted to it and that's where our our block that we we put in there kind of countersinks those screws so they don't touch the surface and the and the finish of the gun we also we got some long screws in here and I don't know if you guys can see, but we've got some rubber washers in there. And that's to give us our retention that we want, and it allows us to adjust it. We can tighten it up a little bit, or we can loosen it. And right now, I think it's just a little bit too snug. It, it actually pushes our uh, slide out of battery just a touch. So we're going to loosen this top screw up right here, and it should be just fine. But anyway, guys, we finished this thing up. I'm going to uh, probably do a little bit more of... Uh, some wet scrubbing on the uh, on the edges here just to clean them up a little bit more. But other than that, this thing is done. So anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think of this video. If you like, uh, let me know what you think of the holster itself as well. Uh, I think we've decided that we're gonna we're gonna name this holster. And um, if if I were doing this as a company, if I were making holsters, I would you know with my background, I would name them all after explosives. So we're gonna name this one the C4. This holster is the C4 for competition. Sure, why not, right? So anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure to like and share it. You can always subscribe by clicking on the bullet. And until next time, take care and be safe.